Hey everybody, welcome back to Armor City. Today's a very long detailing episode since I'll really just be adding details in and around the airport and the highway as well. And I won't so much be building anything new as I'll just be improving what I already had and adding extra detailing to that. Kind of based on trying to make it as realistic as possible and lots of reference points, but also on some of the feedback that I got in the last video. So without further ado, let's get into the time lapse. Now the first thing I wanted to do in this episode was move up the runway just a little bit and this actually ended up creating some issues with the move it mod as some of the paths weren't entirely correctly moved and it also means that I'm going to have to redo some of the connections with the taxiway as well. Though that's not too much of an issue for a reason that I'll get back to later on but the reason that I wanted to move up the runway itself was really just based on a lot of suggestions that I got. Uh, the airport itself was very tight. The runway was extremely close to the rest of the buildings and to the taxiway as well. And especially that gap between the taxiway and the runway was very close. So I wanted to open that up a little bit. And moving the runway wasn't too much effort, but I think it's a pretty good improvement to the airport itself. Now lots of comments also talked about the airport being supremely close to the rest of the city and this is something that I just can't really fix with Move It. Moving the entire airport at once would definitely cause a lot more issues than just moving the runway and would be pretty much impossible. The reason that I did place the airport as close to the city as I did uh, because I do think um, that I placed it quite a bit too close to the city. This was just a miscalculation on my part. But I definitely wanted to place it very close to the city and not even that much less close than it is at the moment because I just wanted to make the travel time, well, the minimal amount that I could between the city and the airport since the idea is really that the city heavily relies on the airport since road would otherwise be the only other connection to the rest of the country. Uh, now, some people also commented that it isn't actually that far away from the rest of the, con of the country uh, either, and this actually turned out to be pretty true. It only takes about 40 minutes to get from this airport uh, to the actual airport in the north part of Bahrain, and I actually overestimated how large Bahrain would be. Uh, literally, this airport uh, and Amr city in general, the idea behind the city is that it's somewhere in the southwest of Bahrain and with the location that I generally sort of planned it only takes about 40 minutes to get from this part to the other airport which is the only place at the moment in the country where people are actually living so the travel times aren't actually too bad but that said 40 minutes to another city by road where you could even have some traffic jams I think does make a difference uh, when you could also just hop on a plane five minutes by metro away so um I still think it's worth it, especially if you figure from the idea of being an international service or information economy kind of hub. Um, especially also if you see that, you know, cities like The Hague and Rotterdam have airports as well when uh, Amsterdam airport is only half an hour away from there. So I think it's, it's still something that I want to try. And of course, I also just want to build an airport in this game. That was just something... I really wanted to try for myself, so um, that's why I have the airport in the city and that's why it's so close to the rest of the city as well. Uh, just to make sure that it's as close uh, public transport wise to the rest of the city as I could make it. It also kind of still connects the airports to the rest of the city, but in hindsight I could have had it a little bit further away from downtown, but that's, there's not really too much that I can change about that at this point. Now getting back to what I'm doing at the moment, I wanted to add some extra detailing to the highway. Quite a few people commented on the fact that the highway was very undetailed, which is a very fair comment uh, because it was it, it was definitely something I wanted to leave behind for this episode to actually finish it up. And some of the stuff that I still needed to do to actually make this look like a realistic highway was aside from just placing general foliage and decals to make it like look a little bit more realistic nature wise. I also wanted to have some barriers on the sides and uh, some lights in the middle. I chose to go to, for these very fancy lights because many of the highway lights are very large and I didn't want to have something that was too large and some of the modern lights were just either very hard to notice or not much special and I really wanted to have some more decorative lights over here and these lampposts like to me are a little bit too big to place them inside the city because they're quite large. I, I do feel they're kind of out of the human scale. 
but I think they fit very well into a highway where everything around the highway in general is always designed to be like seen more from speeding around there which means that everything around the highway is generally made bigger or more stretched out even on the highway itself so I think these are the kinds of lights that I really wanted to use on the highway because they're a bit more noticeable at those speeds and at least add a bit of a, a unique sort of look to the highway as well. I'll definitely get back to the highway detailing uh, somewhere during this episode. I can't actually remember. I'm, I've done a lot of detailing around the place, um, but it will definitely be detailed a little bit more than it is at the moment. I just wanted to get to some of the foliage and decals on the side of the highway as well. Something that I'll be doing quite a bit around the city is just adding decals to add some slightly rocky, gravelly textures to the sand. Uh, maybe this is part laziness because I couldn't be bothered to find more textures to try and test uh, than you know I currently did already. I actually spent quite a few hours just messing with the textures and importing new textures for the sand to see what I actually wanted to get. And for now, I just feel like the decals are a pretty good way to kind of have some slight variations in textures. That's one of the things that's always bugged me about City Skylines, and I think the decals are just an amazing way to get rid of that. Now with that out of the way, something else that I wanted to draw uh, with decals was the detailing on the terminal side of the airport. This enormous concrete area where everything that's most important for the airport is going to be placed. And one of the first things that I wanted to do was to make it look as if they're actually concrete plates that are put in place instead of just a giant smooth concrete field. So here I just put the lines in to make it look like they're actually large concrete tiles. And I definitely feel that helps out a lot because it really gives you that airport look. A lot of airports, well, pretty much all of them, do really have that sort of concrete plate look to them, at least the ones that I've been to. And I think that adds quite a bit to the look. But again, I'll kind of get back to that area as well at some point. But here I just randomly felt like going to this small parking lot and working on that. A little bit. You might find that I'm actually kind of all over the place when it comes to detailing in this episode, um, but there's going to be some interesting stuff happening on uh, the terminal side of things when I want to be detailing everything in such a way that it actually looks as though planes could be guided around the place. And the same kind of goes for the highway in terms of doing stuff with curbs. I wanted to try some custom curbs, but anyway. Um, I just quickly jumped to this parking lot because it was glaringly empty at the moment and just like something that kind of drags you out of the immersion of looking at the airports and I wanted to make sure that if I get some off-ride shots or if I get some pictures of the airport everything that you see is pretty much finished so I quickly wanted to get to that but I'll return to that later as well because I'm just kind of all over the place here. Now here is when I'm getting to the curves of the highway, and I thought this was pretty interesting. I've been experimenting with this a little bit, and I couldn't really find any curves that work together. Uh, it was either uh, like white, yellow combinations, or all just grey, and that didn't really work out too well. But I think the yellow plus black, uh, or, or grey in this case, which is kind of the black, works out very well as curves. This is something that you see quite a bit in the golf area, where the curves around roads uh, are painted and uh, sometimes it's like red and white but in Bahrain I found that in a lot of places it's yellow and black. I'm not actually quite sure uh, what the real difference between it is. It's obviously very like obvious colors and ones that are usually meant to signal danger uh, which definitely makes it quite obvious where the ends of the road are. Uh, but that aside, aside from you know, looking at the map at Street View, just checking out where you actually find these things. I haven't really looked into why exactly curves are painted in countries like this. I just know that it's something that the Netherlands doesn't really do, just keeps them grey. But it's something that you see around quite a bit in these countries, and I haven't really seen anybody try it, especially not mixing these different curves together to make some black-yellow curves. So that, that was something that I quickly wanted to try. And it also just makes everything look a little bit more fancy, like there's a bit more of a neat transition going from the asphalt of the highway to the sand that's on the side of the highway. Now I tried for a little bit to get some different things to fill in the uh, divider between the two sides of the highway, 
and there wasn't really anything that I felt fitting as a fence at this point. There are quite a few highway barriers that I was thinking about using, uh, like these for example, but they all turned out to be too light and just have textures that didn't really fit. So in the end, I just ended up using a wall for that and just left it at that. Now, when we go to the runway over here, there's quite a bit of work that I had to do here. And this is where the majority of the painting comes in. For one, I wanted to lengthen the highway. I've also got a comment that, you know, why would you keep the runway that short if you've got a desert anyway? Uh, that wasn't literally what that person said, um, but I think it makes a lot of sense. It's, it's something that I could just very easily make longer. I don't per se need it, and it's definitely more expensive to have a longer highway. But in case that you do want to have jumbo planes landing here, that should now be possible. I know I wrote down the numbers, uh, I can't exactly remember, but this runway has been lengthened to a little over 2,600 meters, I believe. Yeah, that's it. And that was for the Airbus 380 to land, which I believe there are a few assets in the workshop as well. And those are also some assets that I placed, so still all of the planes that I placed are going to be able to land on this runway. Just means that the runway is a little bit longer to actually accommodate for some larger and uh, international planes as well. Which I thought was also kind of funny in the comment section, there was a pretty large discussion about uh, me calling planes international when they're uh, just medium range planes. And I, I guess this is very much just uh, a sort of egocentric view of mine as a European where international flights are actually very short and with medium range planes um, because if you're in the US or a, a different very large country those would more usually be called intercontinental but in this case I, I definitely meant international planes in terms of a medium range so I reckon a lot of the traffic in this place would come from places like Qatar or Dubai, uh, United Arab Emirates, stuff like that. So those planes should definitely be good for that kind of stuff. Maybe if you want to go to different places in Asia, perhaps even Europe, it could work. Um, but you know, it doesn't really matter too much because now we can just land big planes over here anyway. Now I've been meaning to catch up with what I've been doing on the screen because there's some stuff happening here. I wanted to get to the detailing of the runway and the taxiways most of all, and this took most of the time actually. Um, because the game only comes with a few very simple washed out yellow lines on the middle of the taxiways, but they aren't quite realistic. And, um, well, I just really wanted to expand on that. I wasn't quite happy with how that worked. So, um, I wanted to get in all of the markings here. Now we have the yellow marking in the middle. <laughs> in the middle? What? We have the yellow marking in the middle, which is pretty much always there from the game. And that's just the marking that's sort of the guide for the plane to go over, uh, which isn't too exciting. Um, then on the sides, we also have like the taxiway edge markings, which is uh, the markings that the plane should never ever cross. That's basically to keep the plane going in the right position, pretty much. And then um, between the taxiways and the large field of concrete, we also have like the iOS holding markings, which um, makes like basically as far as I know it means that that's the zone where planes shouldn't be able to like thrive it's like the do not move zone it's basically where all the planes are parked to be boarded and um, yeah that's that's sort of like you've got three zones you've got like the non-movement area where the terminal is then you've got like the taxiways and then you've got another zone which is the runway and for the runway as well we have those yellow markings on the transitions from the taxiways onto the runway and hopefully that should all be correct. Although as, as always, I'm always looking for feedback and critiques and anything to improve anything. Um, but this is really as far as I found. Now here I wanted to get to some of the terminal markings because that's something that you don't really see too often either and it's definitely not something that comes with city skylines. Uh, so one of the things that I wanted to get in here are just some of those vehicle lanes. I actually ended up moving those outward because they're too close to the gates at this point, so there will in the end only be a vehicle lane alongside the ILS marking over here. Um, but that, that's basically where all of the all of the, the vehicles that you need around the airports are going to be going. And um, we've also got some markings like these red ones, 
which are quite a bit better than the extremely bright red markings which I tried a little bit earlier, are basically the places where um, I can't find the English word for it, but where you don't want to have like anything standing, so where no uh, no stuff like trucks or anything else should be, because that's where uh, your boarding thingamajig tunnel <laughs> is as well. And uh, then there are some of the lines for the planes, and um, there are also some like horizontal lines on the yellow lines as well to mark like where which planes should be stopping, as far as I know. Um, though I have to be honest with that, I just sort of randomly put those there. I couldn't actually be bothered to check out where exactly I had to put those lines, and even if I did, I wouldn't be able to get too many because I'm technically not even landing that many types of planes on this airport. Now on the side, and this is a little bit awkward, I have those like boarding things, um, the boarding bridges, but there aren't actually any planes that can connect to it at that close of a distance, at least not the ones that I wanted to use, so I'm actually not going to use those. I wish I could kind of remove them, um, because those are basically just the, the boarding areas for short distance flights or whatever kinds of other like small city jets or whatever you'd want to use. Um, and we still have some like boarding bridges over there, but that came with the airport building and I'm not too happy with ha having those there. You might have noticed that I actually tried to remove them on the other side near the road by placing some buildings over them, which works out quite well. But on this side, it's, it's like a little bit of a messy thing, which I'd rather not see. As for the rest of the detailing, here I'm just marking out the areas where I'll be placing uh, some of the stuff like... Um, I just keep forgetting the word for it. But anyway, all of, all of the stuff that you use around the airport. All of the vehicles and all of the materials and everything. And um, also directly underneath the planes, I just already wanted to add some of the detailing in terms of having the loading of baggage and fuel and um, the tows that carry the planes. I actually forgot to add some fuel, like, um, fuel lines to it. Uh, so that's something that I might want to return to in the future and actually get that in there. Uh, but that's just a tiny detail aside from that. Most of the detailing in here is actually something that I'm really happy with and I'm actually most happy with how the lines turn out. But also the decals, I think it adds quite a bit to make everything not necessarily look dirty, but just have some slight variations in how the concrete looks and also make it look a little bit darker because considering just how light the sand is and how dark I wanted the runway concrete to look. I think it helps out quite a bit to have these decals over here and have that slightly darker look to the concrete, especially at some points where it might be dirty or where there might be some cracks. I think this is where the decals really shine in ending that little last layer of like shine. It's basically that cherry on the pie kind of elements of detailing, but it's it's always a fun and simple thing to add. I think the same counts for the concrete as the sand. It just makes it look a lot more interesting and realistic. Now, finally, I wanted to get to the detailing on the side here, but I'm basically following just about the same procedure here. I'm not entirely sure where exactly I would place the area where people would come out of the building, because this is not actually a terminal building that's supposed to be left without a boarding gate. Um, but then again, I'm not really too worried about that either. Uh, it looks pretty alright. And, you know, if anybody has any comments or ideas on how I could change or add to the airports, or if it's just fine, I'm always happy to, re you know, get any kind of feedback about that. In any case, I'm quite happy with how it turned out myself. Something that I did want to, like, stay away from a little bit was to detail anything else around the airport as much. I think it can be very difficult to try and move away from detailing things or try and move away from placing things at all, uh, but to say it in a strangely cliched way, I don't think you can really notice any detailing if there are no areas without detailing and especially for an area like an airport you want to realistically stay away from detailing every part and as much as it's as it looks very fun to add all kinds of shrubs and bushes and trees and stuff like that around the runway. I wanted to keep it as flat as possible and at some point I was experiencing or experimenting with putting some grass around it like this grass and I was hoping that it would stay really low and just kind of look like 
there's some weeds or like simple stuff growing between the runway. But spoiler, I actually <laughs> ended up removing all of that in the end because I really wanted to keep this very low. Not just for the reasons that, you know, for the look of it, I wanted to keep it completely empty. But also because areas between runways should be just be left as empty as you can. And you don't want to end up having like animals live between the runways or having like any kind of hindrance from the areas between the runways in any kind of similar fashion. So I wanted to keep that as simple as I could while at the same time kind of working with the decals a little bit to at least make it look a tiny bit interesting. And these are just some of the shots there that, you know, looking at it in game at the time I was really stunned actually at just how realistic this game can manage to look. I think the lighting especially works wonders in this case as well and how well the loot works for the kind of climates that I'm going for as well. Uh, by the way, I'm still just on the realistic fee 1.2 loot and as for the, the rest of the theme, there isn't really much else to it. Although I do have to say, I do also use the ultimate eye candy and as far as I know, I've actually set my global light intensity a little bit lower and I think the same goes for the ambient light intensity, but it's not too much of a difference. I think the majority of how this map looks basically comes from the mixed themes, which I know I've gotten quite a few questions about this, but I'm extremely sorry. I can't actually share any given theme for this map because it doesn't have a theme. I just mixed themes together in the theme mixer and I believe there still are some custom textures in there as well. And I think that in combination with the realistic V1.2 kind of gives the entire thing its look. That said, by the way, I still got quite a few comments about sharing a mod and asset list about this city. And I kind of feel bad about that because I update that almost every day and I put a lot of work into making sure that it's updated, but I just forgot to put it in the description for the last couple of times. So that's, that's a pretty bad thing going on there. Uh, so I'll be putting that in the description of this video. And if I don't forget, hopefully also in the descriptions of upcoming videos, if I don't put it in there, uh, feel free to call me out on it and I'll put it in the description. So here I wanted to get to some of the detailing of the other areas that also need some love. Basically for this airport in general there are a few areas where you've got the main terminal and the places where you board. I've got a couple of hangars over here. I'm still not sure if that's actually how you pronounce it. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got a couple of like storage buildings over here. I guess that works where, um, you know, it's just general storage area. There will also be a distribution center for DHL that was KLM at first, but I think it's a little bit more realistic to have DHL over here. And there are plenty of really good DHL assets for that kind of stuff. So hence why I figured to go with DHL in the end. And um, there's also going to be a small fuel loading station with a couple of like fuel things. And finally, there's going to be a heliport, although I'm not quite going to add too much to that in this episode. They're really, <laughs> strangely enough, you know, this is this is a ridiculously long time lapse already, and I even managed to cut out some pieces. I still didn't finish the airport in this episode, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with that. If I'm just going to add finishing the airport to the next episode, but yeah, sadly, I haven't been able to finish it yet. There's just too much detailing going on at the moment. Although some of the detailing, like the detailing over here, is really just adding all kinds of industrial details to these backstage areas to make it like look like they're actually proper areas and not just standalone buildings and really make these these backstage areas come to life as well. I think, you know, assets like this, the, the tiny details don't really matter too much in the general look of the city, but just in making it feel as if it's alive and as if it's actually a functioning real city. A different thing kind of goes for the decals and the decorations around the highway here because I definitely wanted to kind of give a, a good look to this part of the highway by adding all of the foliage and decals around these buildings because in the end this is also kind of the entrance into the city. These are some of the first buildings that you see around the side of the highway so the, the office buildings here kind of form a bit of a sort of wall around the highway on both sides and kind of line them 
for pretty quick access to the road, but also to the airports and to just be a sort of fancy highway skilled area to enter in. I think the thing about this is that, you know, architecture around highways, like office architecture especially, is never really going to be too interesting, but I think it fits around a highway like this because it's it's not too much in a human city scale as well, and you'd rather want to have buildings like these on the edge of your city around your highway than in the middle taking in the middle of your city taking up an entire city block where there could be some more smaller interesting buildings. But you know, that's just a personal thing. That's something I kind of feel about it though. So hence why I wanted to put these very strictly, obviously boring office buildings on the side of the city on the edge here, alongside the highway. Along with some general foliage to make it look like it's not a completely barren desert, <laughs> or as somebody made the pun in the last comment section, Bahrain Desert. Um, but actually there's there's quite a bit of foliage and grass in there as well, as if it's some dunes kind of area. Now here I got to the DHL area very quickly, but I didn't really add too much to it yet. Just some basic ideas of what I'm going to do with that later on. I did want to add some of these concrete plates again though, just to make it look like it's actually a proper set of concrete tiles instead of just... A large field of concrete and then I wanted to get to quickly setting up the heliport area in a very similar sense because I had the concrete tiles at this point anyway. Now as far as I know the reason that airports sometimes have heliports as well is because uh, I believe helicopters even though they can in many situations just uh, get up in, in a vertical way sometimes they would actually just need to use the uh, runway as well for a sort of standard takeoff. So having them besides a runway is actually a bit of a handy thing. I'm not sure if there are any helicopter experts who could chime in on that, but that's basically the reason why I put a heliport on the side of this as well. And even if it wasn't the reason, I would have no idea where else to put a heliport, and this is just for any kind of type of helicopter which you might want to use around Amar City. So it's just a bit of a an added facility to the airports in that sense and I thought it was an interesting extension for the airports. You could see that the airport is actually getting used quite a bit at this point. So at once that's pretty nice. On the other hand I've noticed that sometimes airports start getting stuck in the middle of the sky after taking off. I'm not quite sure why. You might have noticed it by shadows or maybe some parts in the uh, cinematic shots in the beginning of the end of the video. But yeah, I'm not sure why, but planes start flying in circles in the middle of the sky and I'm going to have to get the advanced vehicle options and actually get those things out of there. But until I do, we're pretty much going to have to deal with those things being stuck there. So that's a little bit unfortunate. But aside from that, I guess it's good to see that the airport is actually getting used. One of my initial well, fears was really that the airport wouldn't get used whatsoever because that's something that I was very afraid of with the population of the city being not that high, but I'm glad that at least airplanes are using it quite a bit. Now as for some simple detailing around the heliport, there's just some parking spaces around here for whoever would want to work or use the heliport. Same kind of goes for most of the other facilities. The fuel loading station has some general basic parking spots and also some parking spots for the shell fuel trucks that are going to get in there. And um, basically all of the industrial areas have their own parking spots. So that's all quite simple and nothing out of the ordinary there. I also wanted to decorate it in a very similar way with some fences and decals and some general industrial de detailings to make sure that it actually all kind of looks alive a little bit. And I ended up doing the same over here. That said, I didn't end up detailing things too much. I didn't want to go too in detail because I still kind of feel like I want to give everything a similar level of detailing. And this can sometimes be a bit of a, a, a difficult thing to think about. Usually or very often, I think the way people build cities and the way that it's probably best to do it is to just get a general layout done and kind of focus on some most important areas and, in, and areas that you definitely want to look at and detail those. Um, so to take, for instance, Crumbs McGee series, which I know I've shouted out recently before, but it's, it's really cool to see how he's doing 
like all kinds of intersections. Um, so yeah, definitely check out his link below in the description. But um, he, for example, makes some extremely detailed intersections at some places and adds all kinds of detailed small parts of cities. But just the general layout of a city is often just left in general because there's no way that you can detail every single part of a city. And in Amar City, I kind of want to reach a balance between that. I don't want to go too extremely detailed that I'm like adding separate objects for every square meter of the city or for every square meter of part of the city. But at the same time, I do want to add some detailing that if you zoom in on the city, it still looks like it's a real city. So I'm trying to kind of hit the balance between enough detailing where it actually kind of looks real and there's some interesting detailing going on uh, in the entire city while at the same time not too much detailing that it becomes impossible to have the same level of detail around the entire city and I think this is just a bit of an approach thing I just personally like you know getting into that immersion of having every part of the city have about the same level of detailing but that's just something that I quite like about it. You can actually see the planes kind of flying in a weird curve over there. It's it's very strange. I'm not quite sure why it happens. I've seen quite a few threads on the internet of people having the same issue, um, but at the moment I'm not quite sure how to fix it. There doesn't seem too much of fix in place except for just getting advanced vehicle options and removing those things. I was actually really surprised by the way how much just adding a couple of ferns and trees added to the sides of the runway. I didn't want to really add any advanced foliage besides the runways themselves or in between the runway and the taxiways. Not quite sure why I'm talking about the runway as plural, but um, I did want to put like some simple foliage around the sides of the buildings of the airport because it doesn't really matter too much, but I think it, it gives you a bit of a nicer transition from some of the buildings into the empty spaces of the runway and I'm actually quite glad with how that all turned out. Now as the very final part of this episode, I wanted to get to the other side of the highway and kind of add some detailing to that. It's not quite as much as I would like in the end so I might get back to this as well and actually place some cars on those parking spots. Not sure why nobody is using them but they look really sad empty like that so that's something that I definitely might want to fix but for now I just want to get some simple trees in, some planters, and make sure that it all looks a little bit more interesting by getting some decals in place as well. Now that's almost it for this video. I'll just be ending this with a bit more detailing around the highway in terms of getting some foliage and decals in, but you've probably already seen quite a bit of that. And with some of the final touches to this area, I would like to end this video. So thank you guys for watching and staying through this ridiculously long time lapse. Hopefully it'll be a little bit shorter uh, next time. That's also a little bit more doable for me as well, to be perfectly honest. And half an hour episodes are simply not something that I'm entirely aiming for. But for now, this is basically what I have for this episode and I wanted to get it out as much as I can uh, anyway. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys next time.